Hello and welcome. This is Jennifer from Joy of Stationery. This is a new angle just for the moment, but I wanted to show you the two analog books that I have with me. My Hobonichi Ebek is outside of its cover at the moment. Um, I also decorated the front cover of the Ebek itself just to be super cute with this postcard from the ghost egg, as well as washi tape from the same. But as I mentioned in part one of this sort of two-part functional planning series, the A6 Evec and the Weeks from Hobonichi are my two analog tools that I use to plan for work. And what I have here then, as you can see kind of on my computer screen, is a Notion page, and I'll be going a little bit over how I have used Notion. I am in no way any kind of expert on Notion, but I am a, a an enthusiastic beginner, and I think that there's a lot of really wonderful functionality that Notion has, and I'm eager to learn more, and I'll also just kind of share a little bit about how I've found it to be helpful in tandem with the two analog books that I use. So I hope that this will be helpful for you. So I thought that I would start here to give a little bit of a sense of Notion from what I know about it. I will begin with a bit of a caveat that I am not an expert Notion person. I think there are a lot of really good resources out there and really good videos out there. And I certainly have not even really cracked the surface of, of Notion, but it does strike me as a really, as both a really robust tool and also quite simple in a way that makes it accessible. At least that's how it's felt to me. And I've been quite impressed with that. So as you can see here, this is the first Notion page or Notion website that I'd ever started building, or rather that I ever started tinkering with because I had gotten this Notion website from a template. And hopefully I can sort of show you how this works. Let me go here and you can see that you have a number of kind of setting options, but I want to go to page analytics just to show you that this was a template originally created, I guess by Heather Ellis. And I wish I had a link to the original Notion website that Heather had built. Um, but the way that it works is that there are a number of really great Notion creators. So they, they make templates and a lot of people in the Notion community seem to be really wonderful about making those templates available for others to use. And so what you'll often see with a template is there's a button where you can click on duplicate. And what it will do is it will duplicate the template of that Notion site onto your personal Notion space, if you will. Let me give you an example. So hopefully you can see this. This example is the latest Notion site that I have wanted to bring into my Notion space and try out. And this was created by Dr. Katie Peplin of Thrive PhD. And this is what her original one looks like. If you join her free resources for ACRIMO or Academic Writing Month 2023, for example, she provides a link to this particular site that you can see right here. What you do then is, hopefully you can see my cursor, and you come over here to the top right corner and where you see a button that says duplicate, and you can click on that and it will make a duplicate of this sort of template, this site onto your own Notion space. So let me see if I can return now to my space. So you can see here, we're back to the original page that I had shown you, and I'll be going over a little bit of this as well. But first, let me bring your attention to the left hand side. And you can see that, you know, in this kind of outline on the left, and this is something that you can 
you know, minimize or kind of bring back open that I have this one currently open, Jam's Cozy Adventures. And then I have this one, which is the Acri Mo. I think that for Thrive PhD, the initial site was kind of a dark background. I think because the Notion space that I'm using is the lighter background, that's why you, you see it kind of lighter here. And I'll go over a little bit about how I've populated some of what Dr. Katie Peplin has provided. I'm kind of wondering if it's something that I can bring into my main space at some point. Maybe I can link it as a page. So I do wonder if that's a possibility. Can I bring it? Oh, maybe I can. Let me see here. Oh my gosh, I can. And does it appear then? It appears right here. Okay, that's really cool. <laughs> So I guess you're seeing me do this in real time. Oh my gosh, I love it. So because, you know, I might want to personalize this, that's something that I can, you know, do here. And I'll scroll down all the way. And so you can see there's also this Acrimo daily log that she has provided. The calendar was blank, but what I noticed was if I double clicked to add something, what would populate is a kind of ready-made daily log specific to it. And so you can see what went well today, what could use more support, what was the most interesting or exciting part of my work today, and what is my plan for tomorrow? So you can see that these are the questions that I brought into my analog planning as well. So often what I, I will do is write a brief note about each of these kind of in my Hobonichi A6 AVEC. And then later on at the end of the day, I'll come to this Notion site and I will populate it with a more robust answer. But that way I already have a brief note in my analog planning that I can use to remind myself, you know, oh, what were the successes that day, right? What could use more support? What did I find kind of most interesting or most exciting about my work today? And what my plan is for tomorrow? And then this is a space because I can just kind of type things out where I can populate it with a lot more detail. So as an example, maybe I'll show you my first one. So, and you can see the kind of um, check checklists here, right? Self-care and hit my goal. And that's what I also added to my analog planner as well, since I do primarily like to plan with my analog materials. You can see that I was able to populate the answers to this question in more detail than I would have in my Hobonichi A6 Quebec. So what went well today, setting up a writing plan with Acquai Mo, Mo guidance, including this notion space, et cetera, et cetera. So I hope this was helpful to kind of see in terms of what notion kind of makes available. And for me specifically, the way that templates that others are able to share. So for example, if you go to the left here, you can click on templates. And I think you can actually kind of look for different templates. And I think they provide a number of them that you could potentially, you know, use. And, you know, I would say also to, you know, be mindful of all of this as well. I think there's, you know, it's one of those things where there's so much really wonderful content that it can feel sometimes a little bit overwhelming, especially when you're trying to kind of set this up for the first time. So keep that in mind, but, you know, I just kind of started with two templates that I just kind of happened to find, you know, building off from a template makes things so much more easy. And so this is how I can see managing certain projects, for example, or if you want to kind of manage schedule as well to be really helpful through Notion, just because there's a lot of functionality to it, you can kind of tailor it to whatever needs you might have, whether it's kind of reminders, reflections, scheduling, calendar, tasks, and to-do list. I think it's all sort of possible here. And again, really robust in terms of the kinds of things that you can add, but it all is, I just think such a really clean look to it as well. And that's what I really, really love. 
I will link below. Um, I recently saw a really great notion guide and setup from somebody in academia. I did want to provide that for any of you who are academics and might benefit from seeing that video. And the video comes from someone named Temi, who is an academic as well. Something just to, to kind of mention is that Temi does not use analog planners, only digital. So the way of approaching the Notion page as kind of all-encompassing might be different if you are somebody who wants to go between analog and digital, for example. So that's just a little caveat, but otherwise I just thought it looked really, really helpful. I hope that this might have been a little bit helpful just as a start. And I want to give thanks again to Himawari Stationery for suggesting this as a topic because I think it's a really important one and one that has definitely benefited me revisiting. And I'm hoping that I can find a good system to kind of integrate my analog planning with a bit of digital planning in ways that can help me kind of manage all the things that I have to do. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.